Good day, my dear students. What we have today is coordinate geometry. In our specific objectives, at the end of the lesson, the students should be able to identify the coordinates of some points. They should be able to plot the graphs of straight lines. They should be able to calculate the distance between two points. They should be able to find the midpoint of a straight line. And finally, find the gradient and the intercept of a straight line. The Cartesian rectangular coordinates. We said that the position of every object on any plane surface can always be determined with respect to certain Cartesian axes. There is the plural of axis, A, X, I, S, singular, A, X, E, S, plural. These Cartesian axes are the X axis and the Y axis, respectively. Here, a neutral point, which is called the origin, presented by 0, 0, and can also be called the point of reference, will always serve as a starting point from where every measurement of the needed position is taken. So let us use the figure below for explanation. You can see the point P standing somewhere. P can be a person, a house, or any object. Another object Q, or person, or whatsoever, wherever it is starting, uh, standing, we take the uh, y axis, the vertical axis, and the horizontal axis, and then determine the respective positions of P and Q. P is located at a point where x is 1 and y is 4, therefore, the coordinate of P is 1, 4, while Q is located at a point x is 3 and y is 2. Therefore, the coordinate of Q is 3, 2. He said from the figure above, the position of P is where X is this and that, as I have told you. So, you can simply take the coordinates of P and Q respectively as, I mean, uh, of P and Q respectively as 1, 4 and 3, 2 respectively. Now, how do we plot a straight line graph? You can simply do it originally the way you have been doing it, but there is a simpler way of plotting the graph of a straight line or even sketching the graph. We say that in order to plot the graph of a straight line, the following steps need to be taken. You write down the equation as given to you. Then choose any two or more values of the independent variable. What I mean by the independent variable is the x variable y, y becomes the dependent variable since the values of y depend on what values the x is taking. Next, you use the values in the second step above to get the values of the dependent variable. Then, plot two points on the x, y plane and use your ruler to connect the two points. For example, we are to plot the graph of the equation y is equal to 3x minus 2. We go on to doing it. Solution, as recommended by the steps, you state the equation and make the table of uh, values. The table of values, you can see the values of S are chosen to be 1, 2, or 3. You can choose other values for X, but you must follow the definition of, the value of Y must follow from the definition as given by X, which is said to be 3X minus 2. So 3 multiplying 1 is 3, 3 multiplying 2 is 6, 3 multiplying 3 is 9. Subtract 2 everywhere and get your values of y. So 3 minus 2 is 1, 6 minus 2 is 4, and 9 minus 2 is 7. We carry on. These are the points. As obtained there, when x is 1, y is 1, 1 is between 0 and 2, when x is 2, y is 4, as given from the table, and when x is 3, y is 7, which is exactly between 6 and uh, 8. 
So the points here and here are connected straight, although every point there is on the line, once you connect the points, the three points or any two of them, what you have there is what we call the straight line graph. Now, we are also going to use this particular graph to explain what we mean by the intercept of a given straight line equation. How do we check the distance between two points? So we say distance between two coordinate points. Given any two points on a straight line, be it M and M or any other one that you can choose on the Cartesian plane, for which the coordinates are given as x1, y1 and x2, y2 respectively, or otherwise, whichever way it can be x0, y0 and x1, y1 or x2, y2 and x3, y3 it can be anything like that. So the distance between M and N, which is represented by the absolute value of MN, is evaluated following Pythagoras theorem as this. You can see it. The square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That is a formula. You try and write it down. Please write everything down. Write everything down. Don't wait until you are told. And keep trying. Having done that, for example, as we have given, the positions of M and N are M is at X1, Y1, N is at X2, Y2, so we connect M to N, then in order to measure the distance or to calculate the distance between M and N, we cover the vertical components of M and n, then the horizontal component to form a right angle triangle like this, for which from here down here is what we call the change in y axis given as y2 minus y1. The corresponding change in x axis will be given here as x2 minus x1, and following Pythagoras theorem, which says the hypotenuse squared, which is actually the length of the line we are looking for is equal to the adjacent squared plus the opposite squared, which then boils down to the original formula given to you already. Having seen it, we go ahead by saying, example, we are to find the distance between the points 4, 1 and 7, 5. Solution, we say, let the distance be D. Quoting from the original formula, distance is equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1. You can see x2 is 7. What That is the value of x in the second coordinate. x1 is 4, the value of x in the first coordinate, meaning 7 minus 4, then squared. The next one is y, which is 5 minus 1, all squared. You get everything 3 squared plus 4 squared under the root which comes down to the square root of 5, giving us 5. It means that the distance between this point and this point is 5 units. It is also important to make a sketch of the line, if you can. Next, having known about the length of a line, is it possible to determine the center of that particular line if the total length of the line is known. We say, let x1, y1, and x2, y2 be the coordinates or the endpoints of the given straight line, and we take xm, ym to be the coordinates of the midpoints as shown in this diagram. This is a line, line P, Q, with a center, M, and their respective coordinates as given here. How do we find the coordinate of the midpoint? What is the solution to the coordinate of the midpoint? We go ahead. From there, we find out that, okay, go back to the diagram and see it. You see that from P to M is equal to from M to Q. Each of them is half of the total length. That is the reason why we are saying 
that if we consider S coordinates, the S coordinates at the center minus the X coordinates at the beginning is the distance from the beginning to the center. And it is equal to the difference between the S coordinates at the end and the S coordinates at the middle. So S coordinates at the end minus S coordinates at the middle will give you the same length. What we do here now? We try and collect terms in XM that is making XM the subject of the formula. That's what you need to do here. Once you make XM the subject of the formula, you come up with the equation SM, which is the coordinate of the midpoint, the S coordinate of the midpoint now becomes sum of the terminal coordinates, the coordinates of the endpoints divided by 2. And following the same way in Y, you will also get the coordinate, Y coordinates of the midpoint to be Y2 plus Y1 all over 2. Hence, the original coordinate, which is the total coordinate, becomes the one that contains both the x and the y coordinates, which can be called the odd, the axis. I mean, the coordinates and the the rest of them. So, I've forgotten what I want to tell you anyway, but I will still tell you later. So, S M is giving us x two plus x one all over two. And ym is giving us y2 plus y1 all over 2. It simply means that the coordinate of the midpoint is the average of the terminal coordinates. Then, let, let us use an example and make our work clearer. The question here says, find the coordinate of the midpoint of the line joining the points minus 2, 6, and 8, 20. That is where x is minus 2 and y is 20, I mean, and y is 6, and then the points x equal to 8 and y 20. Solution, we give the initial coordinates, the first coordinates, the coordinates of the starting point to be minus 2, 6 as given, and the end coordinates to be 8, 20 as given. We choose x, m, y, m to be the coordinates of the midpoint and state the equation as given to us originally. Then putting values, knowing that x2 is equal to 8 and x1 is minus 2, you put them together, y2 is 20 and y1 is 6, put them together, take the average of the x coordinates, the average of the y coordinates, do everything to get 6 over 2 and 26 over 2, which comes down to 3 and 13. It means that the coordinates of the midpoint will give you 313. Next, the gradient and the intercept of a straight line. What we are going to give you here will not be enough to tell you everything about the gradient of a straight line. When we get into full equations of straight line, you will get more information about the gradient and the intercept. Here we say the gradient, which is also called the slope of a straight line, is a measure of the steepness of the line. It is the tangent of the angle between the given line and the positive x-axis. It means that the tan theta is equal to g, where g is the gradient. So it is also called the ratio of the change in the vertical axis to the change in the horizontal axis, which we call change in y over change in x. What about the intercept? The intercept of a straight line is the point on the y-axis where the straight line itself cuts y-axis. That's what we call the intercept. How do we find the gradient and the intercept of a straight line? There are two ways of doing this. What you have to do, you either write the equation and make one the subject of the formula. Y, I mean, is the dependent variable because it must not be in X and Y. It can be in A and B form. It can be in M and N. It can be in the form of P and Q. It is not only X and Y can be used in a set of equations or a system of equations. So we say one way of finding the gradient and the intercept of a straight line equation is by making the dependent variable the subject of the formula. It means making y the subject of the formula. And noting the coefficient of x, the coefficient of x there is actually the gradient, 
and then the value of the constant in the system which represents the intercept in the resulting equation. So we carry on. Example, it says find the gradient and the intercept of the equation 2x minus 5y equals 15. What we do, we say solution, write the equation as it is given to you. Have you written the equation? Try as much as you can to make this y the subject of the formula. Remember, in order to do it, first of all, remove x by subtracting 2x from both sides, which is what we have done. Then, divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which is minus 5, and get your system as y to be equal to 2 over 5x minus 3. Having seen it, the system defined before said the coefficient of x is the gradient. So what is the coefficient of x here? It is 2 over 5. Therefore, it says from here, we get the gradient of the equation to be 2 over 5. This thing means 2 over 5. It is exactly 2 over 5. That's what I mean there. Why the intercept is the constant in the system, which is minus 3. If this thing is plus, it becomes plus 3. So the intercept is minus 3, and the gradient of the equation is 2 over 5. This is one of the ways of finding the gradient and the intercept of a straight line. Another method is by plotting the graph itself. We say, what is given here it says another way of finding the gradient and the intercept of a straight line equation is by sketching or plotting the graph proper and taking the gradient and the intercept directly, which is the next thing you are going to see after this class. In assignment, you are going to use that same method that I used in determining the gradient and the intercept of a straight line to answer the following questions. Remember, any, either of the intercept or the gradient can be zero. So don't be embarrassed when you get the answer to be zero. It can be negative, it can be positive, it can be zero. After all, zero is a number in the number system. It is the middle of the positive and the negative. In short, the center. That's the center of gravity of the number system. Okay, the assignment says using any methods of your choice, okay, using any method you're careful, not of your careful, using any method, ignore this off, using any method you're careful, state the slope and the intercept of each of the following equations, equation 1, 2x plus 5y is equal to 4, equation 2, 3x minus 9y is equal to 1, equation 3, 2x minus y is equal to 15. The fourth one, 6x plus 3y is equal to 0. Remember I said anything, something can be 0. Gradient can be 0, intercept can be 0. So use your sense, use your brain, use your number 6. The fifth one, minus 5y is equal to 15. Please cool down, follow this work meticulously. Make your note out of it, answer the following questions, and submit here. Submit here. Thank you, my dear students. God bless you. Keep staying at school and staying safe.